For the first time in a long time, the US Congress may take a serious look at comprehensive immigration reform. Two members of Congress, one a Republican, the other a Democrat, recently introduced a plan to modernize the US immigration system. Now this bipartisan bill called the Dignity Act is at present just a proposal, but informed observers are saying that it might actually have a chance at becoming law. It's a pretty sweeping piece of legislation that touches many areas of immigration. To be sure, there are some big changes contemplated in this plan. In this video, I'm gonna tell you what the Dignity Act has to say about seeking asylum in the USA. I'm Brian Manning, and I used to be an asylum officer with the government, but now, as an asylum lawyer, well, I help immigrants all over the country to secure their future in America through asylum. Okay, let's dive in. The first major area of focus in the Dignity Act as it relates to asylum concerns humanitarian campuses. The bill would create five centers called humanitarian campuses near the U.S. southern border. These campuses will expedite the processing of asylum claims and keep family units together. They will provide an initial credible fear screening within 15 days and finalize asylum eligibility determinations for most asylum seekers within 60 days. Cases that are complex or uncertain will be referred to an immigration judge for a final determination. People who are referred to an immigration judge will be placed in a case management program and monitored until their court date. The processing and screening procedures at these humanitarian campuses will consist of two stages. In the initial screening stage, the first 15 days, various checks and assessments will be conducted, including criminal background checks, biometric analysis, verification of identification, medical assessments, and the initial credible fear interview. Local orientation programming will also be provided to asylum seekers to explain the legal process. Those who don't pass the initial credible fear interview will be removed. In the secondary screening and asylum eligibility determination stage, days 15 to 60, asylum officers will review the cases for final determinations. These officers will have the authority to approve, deny, or refer complex or uncertain cases to immigration judges. Limited reviews of decisions will be conducted within seven days, except in cases where new evidence emerges. Under the Dignity Act plan, if an asylum officer refers a case to an immigration judge after the secondary review, the individual or family will receive a notice to appear and leave the humanitarian campus. They'll be placed in a case management program with strict monitoring requirements. Case officers will regularly check in with them using automated telephone technology. Adults will wear non-invasive electronic monitoring devices and they'll have to check in weekly. Now the Dignity Act claims to ensure humanitarian campuses will have ample space for freedom of movement and for recreational activities. They will have medical staff, social workers, mental health professionals, and child advocates appointed by the Department of Health and Human Services. Non-governmental organizations and private organizations will have access to provide humanitarian assistance case management services, and legal counsel. And to incentivize legal professionals to work at humanitarian campuses, partial loan forgiveness will be granted to attorneys who complete four years of full-time employment providing legal services there. By the way, if you wanna maximize your chances for asylum success, then be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification so that you don't miss the insights that I share on this channel. All right, how else would the Dignity Act affect US asylum? Well, to prevent dangerous journeys through South and Central America and to disrupt human trafficking and smuggling operations, five in-country processing centers will be established in Latin America, including at least one in Mexico, Central America, and South America. These centers will offer pre-screening for asylum eligibility, family reunification services for children, and employment consultations. Asylum officers may grant humanitarian visas to individuals with strong asylum claims, allowing them to travel to the US for adjudication. The comprehensive reforms in the Dignity Act also include measures to record expedited removal and credible fear interviews, terminate asylum status if the asylee returns to their home country, provide warnings for filing frivolous asylum applications, enhance anti-fraud measures, increase penalties for asylum fraud, and extend the statute of limitations for asylum fraud. The Dignity Act seeks to ensure the efficient and accurate processing of asylum cases. To that end, at least 150 additional immigration judges will be hired. This will help address the backlog of cases and expedite the asylum proceedings. Moreover, at least 300 additional asylum officers will be hired under this plan. Additionally, under the plan, Immigration and Customs Enforcement, known as ICE, will hire at least 300 additional case management personnel. 
These case managers will provide support services to individuals apprehended at the southern border and processed at the regional processing centers. Also, at least 600 new Office of Field Operations officers will be hired annually until staffing requirements are met. Okay, we've talked about humanitarian centers and a goal to increase the staff who could handle asylum claims. What else would the Dignity Act do for asylum in the United States? Well, a so-called two-strike policy expands expedited removal authority for individuals attempting to cross the border unlawfully. Anyone crossing at a non-port of entry will be biometrically logged and instructed to apply for asylum next time at a port of entry. If they attempt to cross between ports of entry for a second time, they'll be subject to expedited removal. And that brings us to a really interesting and important part of the Dignity Immigration Act humanitarian status for asylum seekers. A new humanitarian status will be created, allowing individuals who undergo pre-screening for asylum status in processing centers outside the United States to travel to the United States and undergo the formal asylum claim process at a humanitarian campus. The number of individuals granted this humanitarian status will be capped annually aligning with the refugee ceiling for that year. This provision for humanitarian status is important because right now, there's no way to start the asylum process from outside the United States. The Dignity Act would allow asylum seekers to do exactly that, put their case in motion before they come to the United States. If they have success in starting their case at a center abroad, then they get to come to the United States in this special status and pursue their claim. If you're ready to take the next step and get help with your asylum case, then please call my office today. That number is 713-352-1593. And remember, we help people all over the country, so it doesn't matter where you are. Call us now to schedule an asylum strategy session so that we can help you secure your future in America through asylum. Again, I'm Brian Manning, and it's an honor to serve you in your asylum journey.